Hey y'all, hi. I'm so excited to be finally filming this video. It's been brewing for a while. I came across a really beautiful piece of makeup advertising that features a makeup look that I think is like the perfect mix between a makeup style and aesthetic and techniques that I really like and that I frequently employ and a couple of techniques and aesthetic choices that I never do. So today I'm going to try to recreate the look on my own face, but instead of using the makeup that was advertised by this piece of advertising, which is Chanel, I'm just gonna use whatever I can find that looks like it will work. If this is your first time to my channel, then welcome, I'm glad you're here my name is Hannah. I really love makeup and I enjoy reviewing new things, but I also really like doing projects that cause me to use what I already own. I think that sometimes when I see a piece of advertising like this that inspires me, the first impulse is to buy something. I actually used to frequently act on that impulse. I used to act on it so frequently that I spent way too much money on makeup. These days when I have that impulse, instead I go to my existing collection Collection and I look at the makeup that I have and see what I can use to get the same look, which is exactly what we're doing clearly in this video today. If you enjoy this and you're not subscribed, please do go ahead and subscribe to my channel. And now let's get into the meat of the video. So here up on the screen, I will put the image in question. I came across this either on Instagram or in a Google search a while ago, but not super long ago. I didn't know what it was from. I knew that it was Chanel, but I didn't know what the campaign was or what it was advertising. I looked it up this morning and I learned that it's from the 2015 Noir, Chanel Noir Absolument holiday campaign. So this is like a holiday, a Chanel holiday campaign look from seven or eight years ago. Not quite dated, definitely not vintage, but also not what's currently being promoted. This is like, I mean, this is actually from before I was even watching a ton of YouTube, let alone making my own YouTube videos. So that's kind of exciting. Given how quickly things change in beauty and trends and beauty advertising these days, this is actually reaching into the past in a pretty serious way. I've put a little bit of base makeup on. This skin in this image looks, it's clearly photoshopped. I mean, it's it looks poreless, it looks like plastic. So I'm not going to try to get my skin to look like that because I would just end up looking like I'm wearing a ton of makeup on my skin and I, I don't want that for this look and I don't like that just in the everyday. But it, there is that kind of like matte luminosity to it. I can do more to my skin to try to get it closer to that kind of finish, but I'm gonna wait and do that at the end, just in case I get fallout and need to kind of repair the, the little bit of balm foundation coverage that I have on right now. The first thing I'm gonna do is my eyebrows. And the brow, my brows are pretty freshly dyed, so I'm hoping that I won't have to fill them in much. It looks in this image like this model's brows are pretty thick and, and grown out, which mine are. They're not laminated, but they are brushed up. So I'm going to use the Anatato Brow Wax on a little spoolie, but I'm going to use it dry and just try to get like a dry coating of stiff wax all over my hair so that I can sort of push them into shape without sticking them to my face skin. I feel like nothing is happening. Some brow wax came off on the spoolie, but it's not transferring to my brows because it's totally dry. It needs a little bit of something damp in it. But you know what I think I'm gonna do? My Refi brow gel is really on its last legs. Not gel, it's a pomade. It's really almost used up. It's getting, actually it's getting a little stiff in there. You know, it's starting to dry out and there's almost nothing left in the tube. So I'm gonna go straight in with this, the spoolie from that product and rub it into the wax. I know that a lot of people don't like messing their makeup around like this, but I, I don't mind, especially because if this was brand new, I probably wouldn't do this, but I'm about to put it in my empties and I'll probably get a new one. So now I've got like a little bit of the set brow wax mixed into the refi spoolie with the goopier, more liquid refi product. That's gonna give me a little bit like a waxier, bendier hold than I usually get from the refi. 
I think that that will work as at least like a template for the brow part of this look. The eyeshadow kind of goes all the way up into the brows, so we might end up having to fuss with my brows later. I mean, I might end up having to fuss with them. You will be here for it, but I will be doing the fussing. I hope you'll be here for it. If you keep watching, you will. I'm really pushing the product into like the root of these hairs by back combing them like that, like this. And then I'm pushing them into shape. I'm actually quite pleased with the effect of the mixture of the Anotato Brow Wax and Refi. It's like what's happening is th the Refi has quite a strong hold, but my brows always, I'll like coat them with it and then I'll push them into place and then they always fall as it's setting and they don't end up setting in quite as brushed up as of a position. And that is why I often resort to pasting them to my skin, laminating them, because then they stick and then they don't fall while they're drying. And it seems like what happened is that the Anatato brow wax, which is stiffer, and again, I mixed it in dry, it helped the brows to stay in the brushed up position, elevated off of my skin, so in a fluffier way, while the refi was drying. And, they, and so they've ended up, it's ended up that they do feel like they are pretty frozen in place, but they're like three-dimensional and brushed up, kind of like they've been turned into little wires. Yeah, I'm going to leave it like that for now. Next step, the eyes, which are the most important part of this, I feel. Obviously, to get the whole look, we have to have the eyes, the lips, and the nails, which I haven't mentioned yet, but I've already painted them with a nail polish that I already had. It's this nail polish from Static called Cherry Bomber, and I actually really, really like it. And I did it several days ago, and I did it because I was preparing for this video. I've had the nail polish for a while, but I haven't used it because it's. this isn't usually my first choice. I don't usually go for such a dark color, and I don't usually go for like a plummy color. I've just, it's like my favorite nail polish color I've had on in the past several weeks, like the past several colors. So that's exciting. I feel like I'm going to reach for it much more frequently in the future after having done this recreation. I'm nervous about the eyes. This is the part that I'm the most excited about, I think, but it's also the part that I really want to get right. I think I might depart a teeny tiny bit from the brief with the lips, just a teeny tiny bit, but I really want to get the eyes right. And I haven't picked the product that I'm going to use yet because I kind of wanted to go through that with you and show what it looks like when you're trying to find the proper product to do something that you're seeing the end result of with makeup that you know isn't the makeup they use to get that end result and just the makeup that you happen to have. So I pulled a bunch of palettes. The Jungle Lights palette has this purple. Dark purple is what I was looking for, but this is definitely like a whiny plum, a much warmer purple in the picture, and this is a, a very cool kind of grapey metallic purple. So I love this formula, and it would have been amazing for this type of application, but I don't think that that color is going to be it. The e.l.f. Opposites Attract palette I grabbed because it has a bunch of the, these tones in it, but I it doesn't have, like, this is the closest thing to a metallic purple. That's definitely not it. That was this one right here. Yeah, I don't see anything. The overall effect kind of approximates it, but I don't see anything that I can use. The Pat McGrath Midnight Sun palette has a really lovely purple in it, but this too is more, more of like an orchidy blue purple. It's very a very far cry from the purple that we're seeing. Really striking out so far. The Natasha Denona Lila palette. Help me, Lila palette. You're my only hope. Although not really, because I haven't gone through my singles. But I feel like we might have better luck here. And some of these are missing because I used them in the last Build Your Own palette that I built. Maybe one of them would be better. But this right here, though, this is a really good foundation for the look. And this is a great shadow texturally for a look like this. So I'm definitely going to incorporate this. The image, in the image, it looks like a one shadow look, but I know that it's not. I'm sure that there are like a bunch of different shadows. So I feel like if I can mix this with something a little more burgundy, which I don't think is going to come from here, but might come from here. I forgot I had also pulled this little palette. The the Viseart Petite Pro one, Un. The Viseart Petite, Petite Pro Un. This shade is actually a touch closer. They're pretty similar 
But the Viseart one is a touch more burgundy. That's the one on my ring finger here. The Natasha Denona is shinier, but the Viseart is a little closer in color, but still neither of them is dark enough. So I'm gonna look through my singles and see if I can find something that's getting closer to the main shadow from this look. And if not, I will deepen it up with some darker shades, maybe some matte shades. Okay, I'm not really finding very much. It's going to be interesting. I'm definitely going to have to improvise and make do. But I did find this old Makeup Geek single, which is called Steampunk. It looks brown in the pan, but it really has some red tone, purpley grunge. I think this on its own is clearly not the color, but I feel like this might be the shadow that will turn the other colors into something closer to what we see in the picture. So I'm going to start with the three of them, the Viseart, the Natasha Denona, and this single from Makeup Geek. I'm going to start trying to build this look onto my lids, basically just darken the outer corner, dark on the lash line, shiny on the lids, and then shining and diffused all the way up almost into the brows, especially closer to the nose. Like the shadow is going up into the brows more closer to her nose than it is at the arch of the brow. It looks very glossy in the picture, but it doesn't look like it's an eye gloss. It looks like it's glossy because of the shiny eyeshadow. And I do have shiny eyeshadow. Strangely, it also looks from this picture like there's not all that much eyeshadow on the lower lash line. There's probably a little bit, but you can, it's not buffed out all around her eyes. It's like there's a ton of eyeshadow on the upper lid and very little or none on the lower lid underneath the eyes. Y'all, I went over to my vanity to get my micellar water and I grabbed the Club Nebula palette because it's got this like plummy matte, which I think could be really useful for this look. And I forgot, I had forgotten about my Gucci palette because I keep it out on my vanity because it's so pretty and I was just looking through my palettes. But it doesn't really have the right thing. It has a brighter purple, like a grape purple, and then it has this almost like rust colored satin shade, maybe mixed together. That's the way they look mixed together, but it's still, it's like the rust is too strong of a presence and it, we're not really ending up with this rich plum. So I got all excited for a second, but I actually don't think the Gucci palette it's gonna help us out. So back to plan A. And actually plan A has another part to it. I have this plum colored eyeliner from Persona and I can see because it's such a close up on the look that there's something dark and creamy towards the lashes. It almost looks like, or it very much looks like there's a very thick layer of eyeliner drawn close to the lashes and then eyeshadow applied over it. I've done that a lot and that's exactly what it ends up looking like. So I'm actually gonna start the look with a base of of this Persona eyeliner in the outer corner to hang on to shadow and make it as dark as possible and then across the lashes for the same purpose. So this is really sticky and stiff, this liner. It's great for the waterline because it lasts a long time. I'm actually gonna put a little bit in my lower waterline while we're at it. But it doesn't blend out the way that some really creamy liners do when they're in this situation. Like it's not really blending like an eye coal or something like that. So hopefully it doesn't keep the other eyeliner. Like yeah, it's, it's actually, it's even really hard to get off my hand with my cellar water. So it's like a really long lasting eyeliner. Hopefully it doesn't keep the shadow from going on well on top of it. I'm gonna start with the Natasha Denona, the really shiny one in the center of my lid. Okay, okay. I'm going to go in with a brush and I'm going to go into the Viseart and basically use what's on the brush to mix with what's on my lids and also blow it out further, kind of like past the outer corner and up towards the brows. I know that it looks terrible right now. It's because <laughs> I didn't... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks like a real fail right now. It's just because it's a very light wash and I'm trying to like lay the shape down. It could be a disaster, but I haven't lost hope yet. The Natasha Denona shade, it's got a lot of iridescence in it, like unexpectedly, and it's making it, bl it's blending it out to something that's a little bit harder to control. So I'm trying to make it quite soft and buff it out even more because I'm gonna need to go back on top of it with something that's not so dynamic that I can control a little better. This is just the, the base. And yeah, I'm getting a little fallout, but it, it's a fool's errand to try to fix it now. I'll wait, I'll, I'll do it after the, eyes are totally done. Maybe the Natasha Denona shadow, but but maybe both of them were the wrong choice 
because they're like lighter and more iridescent than than a shadow that I would usually use for for this. I need something that's richer and darker that will sort of get things under control structurally. So I'm, I'm going to tentatively start using this Makeup Geek shade, even though it's not quite the right color. This is way harder than I thought it was going to be, and it's going way worse than I thought it was going to go. I don't know if I can save it, but I wanna try. And I think that to try to save it, I'm going to have to depart from like trying to replicate what I see and move into a realm where I am basing what I do on my thoughts and feelings about the look. You know what I mean? Like the the overall effect of it, the overall impression of it. I'm trying to dupe the vibes rather than recreate the exact look. So I, I have to do that. But the thing, the other thing that I want is that I don't want to lose the color because it's one of the things that I really love about about this. It's like that color. So I'm going to let go of being faithful to the technique. And for me, that means I'm, I need to bring in some actual like very fine particles of mica to create that shiny sheer wash and to help things blend. But I'm also going to use some of the matte shades that I found that are closer to the actual color. Oh, I feel like this is too purple. I need something that's on like the red side. Maybe that Natasha Denona matte could help. And maybe this matte from the Viseart palette. While I was over at my vanity looking for things that I could use to try to save this, I found this Auric Smoke Reflect and Disrupt. It's definitely more, more red than the purple here, but it's closer than many of the things that we have seen. It comes closer. So I'm actually, I might try to mix some of it in, but that could be a disaster too. All right, I'm gonna work for a little while longer and see what happens and then I'll check back in with you. I just have to focus. Okay, this is good. The, the smoke reflect is giving me a more red base than I had before. And I think that that's good because I have all of these purples that are like more blue. So I feel like layering on top of this smoke reflect is gonna get me closer to the color that I'm after. Okay, I think that we might be getting closer to something that I can save. Heroes for this round were the Oryx smoke reflect, reflect, which is a beautiful color and such a versatile product that does exactly what I want it to. And this shade from the Lila palette that I just started using more in the outer corner, that's helping me like deepen and it's still keeping those sort of purpley plummy undertones. But I have to do something about the mess that's all around my brows, like all up here. So I'm bringing out the big guns. The big guns are Natasha Denona Kava. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Glitter obscures all manner of ills. A sheer wet look shiny shade made up of teeny tiny particles of mica or glitter is such a useful tool because it refracts the light in all different directions and obscures patchiness. At close range with this look, it's definitely a departure. There's not this kind of wet shine on the brow bone for this look. And because I'm because the picture's so close up, I'm pretty confident there's no kind of reflective particle involved in this look. But from a distance, even though I know it still looks a mess, I just think, I think, <laughs> I perhaps foolishly still think that I can save it. Even though from a distance it still looks a mess, when I add more of this all over, I think that it's going to help it look more like the shiny, editorially shiny thing that we have going on here. I also see a really strong bright reflect in the inner corner on this look. For that, I'm actually going to use Sparks, which is similar to Kava, Sparks from the Gold Palette. Similar to Kava, it's just got less color in it. It's like a straight, it's a very pale gold kind of white shine rather than like that champagne gold shine of Kava. Okay, I feel the primary problem that I'm facing right now is that when I was laying down the base of the look and I drew some of that shadow up into this part of my eye, I had a shadow on my brush that was much more iridescent than what they used for this. It was that first Natasha Denona shade that really did me dirty. And so it looks quite patchy and weird there. So I need to put something there that looks more intentional. And I think that it it will help if it's a matte. And then if it ends up being too matte, I can put some of those shiny shades on top of it. I'm gonna use this matte Cylon from the Kaleidos palette. And if it starts getting too purple, I'll mix it with the redder burgundy matte from the Viseart palette. This color is actually turning out to be when it's applied quite close to the color 
that I need. It's, it's not as purple when it sticks to the skin. Yeah, that's the weirdest looking part of the look for me because I never put eyeshadow there. I never put dark eyeshadow there like this. Okay, we're getting closer to something that I feel like I can say was like my best first try at something that approximates the idea, the general idea of this ad. I think that the last thing that I want to do before I sort of, I don't know, just apply mascara and see what it's all ending up looking like is to put something darker, even darker in the outer corner to make it just a bit more dynamic. I know that it's partly the shadows and the light in the photograph. I know that it's partly the shadows and the light in the photography of this, but the the outer corner right there is just really, really much darker in the image than it is on my eyes. It's like the darkest part of the look. And because it's getting, it's gotten so completely out of control and messy looking, I know it might sound counterintuitive to add a dark shadow. Making parts of the eye look very, very dark will make other parts of it look lighter by comparison and maybe make it look overall a little bit less. <laughs> monstrous. So this is a black that I'm using. It's my, uh, it's my black from Lethal. I know it's still maybe looking like I didn't succeed, and, and perhaps I didn't, but in my defense, this is a, a, a really editorial look. I think it got, it got more like Biba girl 1920s, like flapper, costumey flapper on me than it looks in the picture, but I do think that if this model were to open her eyes, it might look a little bit more editorial on the face than you can tell from this picture that it looks. And I also think that once I clean up my skin and add some mascara and just generally like finish the edges with a little bit more base to make sure that the edges are clean and kind of push my brows back into place, I think that once I do that, I hope that once I do that, it will look <laughs> a little bit more intentional. <laughs> I'm gonna do all of that right now. Be right back. Okay, there's there it is just with cleaner skin. I actually also groomed my brows more, th much more than they were and even a little bit more than they are in the picture. Like I, I did sort of laminate them and make them a little bit smaller and more sculptural. And I do think that it helped. And while I was doing it, it made me think that another thing that would probably make the whole thing look and feel more intentional is making my hair, putting my hair into an extremely controlled, groomed, smooth hairstyle. So before I keep going, I'm actually gonna do that too. I didn't put mascara on yet because uh, I decided there's something else I wanna do. I think there's something else I wanna do on my lids, but I'm gonna do my hair first and see how it all ends up looking. Okay, forgive me if this looks imperfect. I'm, I'm not really an influencer. I also have all these layers in my hair, so it's hard to get them to do this, you know? But I feel like it's accomplished a couple of things. One, it's given my head a shape, like my hair, the, the hair part of my head, a shape that references the 1920s. So there's something other than just this intense eye makeup all the way up to my brows that's referencing that decade and like the makeup of that decade or the style of that decade. And that again, helps it look more intentional. And the other thing it's done is just, you know, given me a sleeker overall profile that has created balance. When the eyes were super wild and the hair was also super wild, and then the brows were also super wild, everything was super wild, and it was harder to like see what you were looking at, you know? I know that when I'm editing, it's gonna drive me crazy that there's this little poof on top sticking up, but I've gotten myself into a situation where I can't really stick it down without like, well, maybe there we go. It probably looks really weird in the back. I feel like that's good enough for you to get the idea for the rest of the video. Where's a little pussycat wig when you need one? The thought that I had while I was doing all of these sort of like polishing and finishing things is that I feel like the eye look needs some more light brought to like the the center of the lids and the sort of inner corner. I just feel like it needs more light, but I didn't make a plan for what I want to use. Okay, I found something, the perfect thing. This is by Lethal Cosmetics. It's their liquid eyeshadow in the shade Bandwidth, which is a really shiny liquid shadow. So I'm gonna go in with a clean brush because I don't wanna put the paddle right onto my eyes because it's gonna get a bunch of purple eyeshadow on it. And I'm just gonna use this to kind of like paint some light onto the eye. Y'all, here's what I have to say. This stuff is incredible and has completely saved the day, in my opinion. It has done what even Natasha Denona Kava 
failed to do to really glossify the whole thing on top of that mess of really dark shadow, make it look super intentional. I used a lot of it in like this inner part that was getting really muddy. And I mean, it's still muddy in its way, but I feel like the the combination of like the dark and the light make it look more, it, it's making it work better, I think. So I used a lot of it in there and up here. And then I brought it partway across the eye and a little bit up to the brow bone, but this shine on all around the outer corner and up on the brow bone, that's still Natasha Denona Kava. You can see that it's kind of a softer, wet look, whereas this, that like beaming light from in there, that's the lethal, that's the liquid shadow from lethal. We have quickly gone from what I thought was going to be a true disaster to the best thing I've ever done. My favorite thing I've had on my eyes in a really long time. I'm worried that it looks worse on camera than it does in person. In person, in my opinion, at this moment, it's definitely departed from what we're seeing in the picture, but I feel like I finally got to a place where I nailed the brief, the, sec the, the amended brief <laughs> of like using some of my own techniques and instincts to do my best at making a thing like this. I love it. Let me put some mascara on and we'll see. Y'all, I'm really out here feeling like Kylie's unique love in All Star 6 in the final lip sync when she tripped and almost fell on her face and then she did a forward roll. I've, I've just been revisiting my brows and doing a tiny bit more grooming, just trying to get them to be so structured but soft. Yeah, I am living for this and I'm really glad that it wasn't a thing where I ended up washing it off and starting again. Sometimes you gotta just keep going, y'all. Sometimes you gotta just keep going. So if it were me, if it were just me doing my makeup for something, I would probably do the lightest possible everything on the rest of the face. You think that for blush, we're definitely gonna do uh, like a really, really neutral, just sculpt, little bare, the barest sculpt moment. So I'm using this Armani Neo Nude Melting Color Balm in the shade 20. And I'm just going to, I mean, you can't see the cheeks of the model in the picture because her hands are up, but from what you can see, like you can't see any color. So I'm using this just to try to make it look like I'm not wearing much base and that this is just the color of my cheeks. I'm not really trying to add blush. Oh, we can put it up here like Khaki always does, but today you can see it. Exciting. I am going to go ahead and just put a bit of powder around my mouth, like chin, continuing to use this Givenchy powder. It's what I almost always use, but I don't know that much about powder. This is just the one that I have. And I find that it does, especially when I put on a thick layer, which I'm not gonna do today, but it does give me that kind of like satin, sort of like satin matte that like porcelain matte finish. It's not really satin matte. It's that like, it's that like glowy matte that we're seeing in the image. It's time for lips. Curiously, it was really hard for me to find anything in my collection that is this color. I, I have a lot of red lipsticks. I posted a video pretty recently swatching all of my lipsticks and I have a lot of reds, but they're all the same color pretty much. They're like brighter orangey reds. And this is like a mid-toned wine red. So I'm going to use my trusty Les Quatre Rouge La Poudre lip powder palette to lay down the color. It's gonna be one of these bottom two. Uh, maybe a mix, actually. I think it's gonna be a mix of these bottom two powders. Luckily, they're really easy to mix. They're so easy to work with. Really lovely formula. I'm going to try to get the shiny finish. I can't get it from this, but this is the only thing that I have that's like the right color. So I brought a, a gloss over here that I'll top it with at the end. So I'm not departing in terms of finish, but I am departing. I mean, I'm departing from the image in a lot of ways. Clearly, I already have. But my intention was always to depart in this way. I'm not going after such a harsh, sharp lip line. I'm going to have a slightly softer, more wearable lip line. The way I think of this is that when a makeup artist sets out to create a makeup look like this for a campaign, or rather when a, a group of people are creating a campaign for a makeup brand and creating this image as part of that, they're trying to create the photograph. This makeup artist was trying to create a photograph. The makeup artists and the photographers and the director and everyone, they were all working together to create this image. And I am trying to create a makeup look 
like the living version of the thing that was created as a static image here. So even though the makeup artist did paint this look onto the face of a model, it wasn't necessarily designed to wear and I'm trying to wear it. So I'm making alterations based on what I know is the most wearable for me, what works on my face, on my lip shape, and what I feel like I can comfortably wear. And I much prefer uh, a slightly soft natural lip line to a really sharp, harsh lip line like this, especially in a glossy formula. It's really hard to keep something that's as sharp and glossy as this looking pristine. So that's just, it's, it's imprecise right now, but that's the two shades, the two bottom shades mixed together. And I actually feel like the color is kind of spot on. It could be deeper, but uh, so I'm going to add more color, but I'm going to keep going with just a 50-50 mix. <clears throat> I still love this product so much. I struggle to use it because of its format. It, I just don't see it on a daily basis. When I'm looking at my lipsticks, I don't see it there because it's not the same shape as them, but I love it so much. I still feel so impressed by it. I think I need to like actively and intentionally shop my stash for it. Okay, there we have it. I've overlined a little bit with the soft edge, but I'm not necessarily trying to replicate the shape, like the defined shape of the model's lips in this picture. It's just the shape of my lips and the color as close as I could get it. I'm going to use my finger to dab a tiny bit of this Chantecaille gloss on top. I picked it because it's very shiny and it's a pretty innocuous gloss. It doesn't have a lot of bells and whistles, but it's very shiny without being too heavy or slidey. So the model's lips in the picture are just like almost dripping with gloss. You know what I mean? There's like this really thick sheeny layer of gloss. I think if I were going to try to take this picture or a picture like it, I would add more gloss. But again, I want it to feel wearable. You know what I mean? I'm going to keep talking to you for a little while yet, and I, I don't want it to just feel like impossible to, to wear, to move in, to talk in. And this is a pretty good approximation of what we see here on the model's lips, especially for me as someone who doesn't usually wear lips like this. I wish you all could see my like workstation right now. It's a mess because there are like all these things open, all these palettes. It's a lot. This whole thing was a lot. This whole video has been a lot. I've been filming for a lot longer than I expected to. I had more trouble than I expected to, and I ended up with a more dynamic and possibly more costumey version of this look. This isn't very Chanel, I feel like, whereas the image is, it has this intensity, but it's also very Chanel. However, I can't say that I'm not pleased and excited by the final look. I am. And even though this eye look is less wearable in the same way as it would be if I had if I had managed to somehow really like perfectly recreate the way that it looks in the image, I still I think I like it more. And it's it has ended up weirdly being my favorite part even though I struggled so much to get it to work and to get it to look like something that I did on purpose, like something that was supposed to be this way. I feel kind of like a different person. I feel a little bit like I'm in drag. I feel more like I'm in drag than I usually do when I have makeup on. And that is a really exciting feeling. Yeah, I feel like when it comes to executing the brief, so trying to replicate this look, I could definitely have done better. If I find in myself a continued passion for really figuring out how to do the exact look in this image, the eye look, then I think that I will do much better the second time. I th I've learned a lot this go round and I've learned like what not to do, what not to start with. I've learned what products I have in my collection that are going to get me the closest to this color, that are gonna be the easiest to work with. If I had it to do over, which maybe I will, <laughs> it's up to me, I would start with Disrupt from Auric, the smoke reflect, the holiday smoke reflect. And I would use that to sketch out the shape. And then I would layer on top of it some brighter purples to make it more plummy and less red. And then I would use some darker shades in the outer corner to make it like really, really grungy and black. And I would probably get a much better approximation of this look with fewer products and in a shorter amount of time. But this has two things. One, I am not unhappy with the way that this eye look came out. I could see myself trying to replicate this eye look again in the future. And I got to know products in my collection that I haven't been using, particularly this unbelievable liquid eyeshadow from Lethal. 
that I'm, I'm so excited about now. And I'm actually like more excited to use this again than I am to try creating this look again. So there's only one thing left to do, which is to, to like do the pose, you know, I have to do the pose. I'm worried that I'm gonna leave like fingerprints on my skin. So I wanna do it. I need to get it right the first time. This is the angle, right? Am I doing it? This is basically it, right? I feel, I feel ridiculous. Yeah, I left fingerprints. All right, that's it, y'all. <laughs> what fun. I don't even know what to say. Let me know how you, how was it for you? Because I have been worried much of the time and I'm actually kind of still a little bit worried that the vast majority of people are gonna be like, girl, you look a fool. You still look a fool. You didn't recover. It didn't end up looking fierce. It looked like a mess from beginning to end. I'm worried that that's what you guys think. My feeling, my genuine feeling, I'm not just saying this, is that it looked extremely dire for a long time and then suddenly it came together and it's like a total win. I, I'm actually genuinely over the moon. This is like a kind of makeup that I've always loved and always wanted to do more of and it's just been really exciting to learn more about this and to execute this vision here for you today. I'm gonna go. Thank you so much for watching this wild roller coaster ride of a video in which I tried to recreate this Chanel ad without buying anything. I, I really hope that you enjoyed it and I hope that you are remembering to take extra good care of yourself today so that you can be the most effective version of yourself as you do your work in the world. 